Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic, or perhaps welcome back to me as I'm back in the UK, having spent uh, three days in Poland, in Krakow, at the World Sudoku Championships, which was an absolute blast. Before I talk about that, I want to talk about Shy and Jovial's incredible classic uh, Sudoku, which is on Patreon, and that gives you the opportunity to write in and explain the best solution path, and there will be some sort of prize for that. Um, we really are intrigued to know how people see this puzzle because uh, we have seen what Shy and Jovial have to say about it, and it's just mind blowing as a as a classic that can be solved. We're really interested to know what people make of it. Uh, it's a bit of theory for you, but there is a prize for the best explanation. We've done that before. We got some absolutely brilliant explanations of a Philip Newman puzzle in the past. So do check that out. Of course, there is until tomorrow to enter the, I was gonna give it the wrong name, the duality competition by Sudoku Skunk Works. At some point we'll be streaming again, again, Hopefully I will finish off that Udukos puzzle, which we was left hanging from the 500k and there will be some more guest the setter stuff and Who knows what else is coming on the channel? There's been a crossword lately. We've got all sorts of things going on on Patreon on Well on discord. There's always good stuff going on and of course the Kickstarter please do Pledge to the Kickstarter if you haven't done it already. Our book will be amazing. We're absolutely on the verge of hitting the um, user chosen content as well. Or not user chosen, but, but there will be a chance for people to select puzzles, which is great. Uh, that worked very well in book one, so it's going to work very well in book two also. Uh, now, this is going to be quite an unusual video. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to talk about the championships a bit. I'm going to, there will be a solve during the video, although it'll be me commenting on a solve I've just done of one of the puzzles that I didn't try during the championships. Um, and the reason for that is because I'm doing it as a speed challenge. So I'm seeing if I can get it done in five minutes. I will explain why as we go as we as we go through the championship but if you want to jump to that bit it'll be me commentating on my own as fast as I could solve in which I wasn't commentating because I was going as fast as I could uh, so anyway we will get to that as we go through it but um, what have I got I've got it was a great championship for me that's that's the headline for me personally if you don't want the bragging jump forward a minute or two um, that was me finally getting my hands on first place in the um, over 50s competition. Yes, I have, to, I have to see myself only in that competition these days because uh, I still can't compete with the guys at the absolute top of the field. They are so far ahead. In fact, the top three, Teet Vunk, uh, Tan Tan Dai and Kota Morinishi, who have been the top three for I think a number of years and I mean I can be corrected on that but they it wouldn't surprise me if they've been the top three for a number of years are uh, they were 10% in terms of points scored ahead of the people in fourth and fifth place who were still phenomenal solvers and way ahead of me um, I finished 21st in the final reckoning I I did text Simon that I was 19th because when they put up the scores for the final rounds that's where I was listed. Um, I didn't realise at that point they hadn't marked all of the last two rounds of people in B and C teams for their countries uh, because they couldn't qualify for the playoffs and the wild cards to try and be the ultimate champion. Uh, so I know that Yuki Kawabe popped ahead of me from Japan and somebody else must have done, maybe on a remark or something. and. I don't know, but uh, I finished in 21st when when the dust settled, and that is incredibly higher than I was expecting. I wrote to somebody before the championship began with very realistic goals of hoping to get into the top 50 and hoping not to be the worst person in the UK team. Well, I absolutely whapped both of those goals. Um, to finish in, in the top 21, well, just outside the top 20, is an absolute thrill. Um, I've never been that high before. 
Simon reckons that uh, this job I do now must have helped my Sudoku ability, and that may be the case. I think I may also have been helped by the fact that the puzzles were pretty hard overall in this championship, and I guess that's what we've been having practice doing on the channel. Uh, not Normally the standard of the World Championship of puzzles that are either um, genuinely or quite approachable, as we'd describe them, um, sort of puzzles that might take me six or seven minutes normally, but at this championship, I mean, there were point rankings for the various puzzles in each round, um, but it was very difficult. You, you didn't ever almost hear anybody say they'd finished a round, only in the um, Samurai round, which was an absolutely fascinating combination of 14 classic Sudokus in one all linked together and I think we got 30 minutes to try and take those on which works out at just over two minutes a puzzle there were quite a few finishes of that maybe 15 or 20 but other than that I think almost no rounds were finished one or two and I apologize to the super solvers who did do that um, but it was really fascinating it was great the best part was forget the performances the best part was getting to meet with old friends and new and lots of people came up to me during the championships and said that they'd been introduced or reintroduced to Sudoku by by the Cracking the Cryptic channel and uh, that here they were now as a result of that at the World Championships and uh, congratulations to them for, for going, for being in their teams, for what they did. I was particularly delighted that numbers one and two in the uh, under 18 category uh, Nityant Agawal and uh, Chan Air Chiran were, were in that category. We've done puzzles by them on the channel and uh, I was amazed to find that uh, Chan is only 14 so he's got years ahead of him in the under 18 um, rankings and uh, yeah I've got this I've shown you the photo so Anyway, yes, I was going to talk a bit about what happened at the latter end of the championship. So we had, the beginning was, um, how many rounds? I think there were 10 individual rounds, seven on the first day and three on the morning of the second day, all between 30 and 45 minutes each. Uh, there were also some team rounds after those on day one and two. I, we might get to that later, but they, they were good fun, very interesting competitions. But uh, oh, I will get to one of the team rounds actually during this. But anyway, the, the individual competition was those 12 rounds. Then there was a, yes, the, the, the last team competition was a head to head. You pit, pitched the four of your individual team members against four team members from another team, one against one. and. Anybody who finished a puzzle first correctly scored a goal effectively for their team, or a little point as it was called. And then you added up the number of little points that you got, and whoever won the match got a th three big points. Um, however, there was a bit of a problem for a lot of us in that these puzzles we were given five minutes each to do, and very few goals were scored, I will say that. In three of our five matches against other teams, um, there were nil-nil results because nobody finished a puzzle correctly. Nobody finished a puzzle at all. In fact, if you finished and claimed you'd finished and you'd got something wrong, you would inst that was an own goal. You instantly lost a goal, effectively. So uh, nobody finished a puzzle at all in three of them. In one of the matches, only one person... Um, well done, Jan from the Czech B team, finished a puzzle against us. And so we lost that 1-0. In the other one uh, was the classic round. And I have to admit, all four of our team did finish and score a point. So that one was all right. But in general, five minutes a puzzle was very difficult. And what I thought I would do is a puzzle from the later stages of the team round after we'd been knocked out. And I don't know quite how I ended up with this puzzle when I brought it home, because I never tried it on the, in the event, but I'd never seen it before. It was clearly the seventh puzzle. I only did the first five. And um, what I'm therefore going to do in a moment is to commentate on my solve of this puzzle, which I've just done, 
to see if I could get it done within five minutes. And obviously, rather than watching that solve, you can try on the first link. However, I am putting up a couple of other puzzles as well. And uh, the first of those, the, so the, the anti-diagonal is the puzzle I'm going to have a go at and commentate on. Um, the second puzzle is a diagonal. And be very clear about the differences between the rules on those two. In the anti-diagonal, you have three different digits on each diagonal, and they must repeat three times on that diagonal. In the diagonal, there are nine different digits on each diagonal. Um, so those are very different rules. And the anti-diagonal, I didn't do. The diagonal, we all had to go at. Everybody, it was the first puzzle in this head-to-head -head round. And in the whole room of 217 competitors, I'm not sure exactly how many took part, but about that, that was the, the original start list, five people solved this diagonal puzzle in five minutes. So if you can do the diagonal in five minutes, uh, that's better than Teet and Tantan, who didn't do it, from what I understand, and only five very special people. I think a couple of the Indian team, one of the American, uh, a couple of others, I'm not sure exactly, solved that puzzle within five minutes. I think overall the organisers probably realised that they'd made the puzzles a bit hard for this round, which would otherwise have been very exciting with goals being scored for both sides. But in practice, it was very hard to, to get one at all. Um, so that was the second puzzle. Now the third puzzle came from the wild card um, section of the competition. Now what happened after these 12 individual rounds, 12, the top 12 competitors were qualified for the playoffs. And then the next 22 who were in a, who were the best in their own country's A team were allowed to enter a wildcard tournament where there were head-to-head -head knockout matches. Again, on virtually the same basis, except we were allowed seven minutes this time for the puzzles because they were a bit harder. And if you could beat your opponent, you went on into the next round. If neither person won, then if neither person finished the puzzle in the time, then whoever had the higher ranking before continued. And this all allowed one wild card to get into the playoff rounds. And the playoffs were four people pitched against each other. So first of all, it was the people who finished 10th, 11th and 12th and the wild card. And they competed on, I think it was at that time, three puzzles in a row with 21 minutes to solve them, including having to wait a minute for each one to be marked once you handed it in. Um, and then you would get the next puzzle. It was very exciting. And this continued. So one person from that 10th, 11th, 12th and wildcard went into the 7th, 8th, 9th and that person, the, the sort of quarterfinal. And the semi-final was the people who were positioned fourth, fifth, sixth, and the person who'd qualified. And the final involved the top three, numbers one, two, three, and whoever had qualified so far. And unsurprisingly, it would be very hard to get through all the wild card rounds. But the puzzle I'm showing you, which is an anti-night puzzle. Um, so normal Sudoku, let's just, I'll just call it up. Normal Sudoku rules apply and identical digits can't be a night's move away from each other. That was the one I competed against David Jones of Canada. I had already got through against Dennis Keatman from um, the Netherlands on a, on a, was it a diagonal puzzle? It was a diagonal puzzle, not the one we're seeing today. Um, and I managed to do that in the seven minutes. But this one, um, I got to within 13 digits, which would be about another 15 or 20 seconds, and very frustratingly didn't quite finish. I was apparently all correct up to that point, so it would have been very quick beast mode to finish. But David had hit a bit of a brick wall and just basically stopped to see if I would finish in time. And uh, unfortunately for me, I didn't. So he qualified at that point and went on to be knocked out later, I, I believe. But anyway, very many congratulations. In the actual final playoff, um, it was won by Teet Vunk, but it was spectacularly exciting. Now, I do have, well, it was for Sudoku people, I do have some footage. It's not brilliant, and I have literally no idea 
how to get it off my iPad and maybe show it to you in a video at some point. But it was an absolutely thrilling final in that uh, Tan Tan Dai, who's been on the channel before, um, she struggled with the first puzzle, handed it in, only to find there was an error in it, took ages to find the error, corrected it, and then was miles behind, but went so fast through the other four puzzles that they were solving in the final that in the end she was within five seconds of T. It was just incredible to watch and a really exciting tournament. Many congratulations to both Teet, Tan Tan, Kota, and all the people who finished above me. You are fantastic. And uh, I am just thrilled to have been elevated into the top 30 for once. It's certainly not happened before. I'm delighted with that. So let's have a look at my solve of this anti-diagonal. This is by uh, Piotr Gdowski. Uh, who also actually did the diagonal, which which will be one of the links as well, which you can try. That's the one that almost nobody solved within five minutes. No idea what the stats were on this anti-diagonal, so we'll watch my solve in a moment. And the anti-knight was the one that I didn't quite get within seven minutes. As far as I know, only the four people in the room at the time tried it and nobody quite finished it within seven minutes. So if you can do that within seven minutes, this within five or this within five, you should be at the World Championship and you would be kicking some serious butt. So give it a go if uh, next time it comes round. Get in touch with your National World Puzzle Federation member and uh, join in the competitive fun because it is fun, but it's also very social, great. It's a great pleasure to have everybody assembled in one place and meet people there. The rest of the competitors, or many of the rest of the competitors, are now competing in the World Puzzle Fe P World Puzzle Championship, which is all the pencil puzzles that many of them have predated Sudoku, of course, and that goes on for even longer. I think that takes Thursday, Friday, and a bit of Saturday. So we'll hear some results from that in due course as well. It tends to be different names at the top of the leaderboard, although actually Ken Endo is phenomenally good at both, but there are, there are others too. I'm sorry for not mentioning anybody I should have. But now I am going to commentate on my solve of this um, anti-diagonal, which, as I say, I called it up for the first time I was seeing it to solve and tried to solve it within five minutes and... So here we go. This is me putting the link into my um, app and then restarting the timer. And here we go. So I'm looking on this diagonal and realizing I don't really have a method for approaching this. So I'm just going to start by putting in pencil marks in rows two and eight, columns two and eight, which seem to be the key squares. Quick look at the centre. Can't do anything with that. Seems to be three possibilities. Now I find the one that's useful. This one can only be eight or seven and that eight in the central box means that eight is not one of the three numbers on that diagonal. So that must be a seven. Now that means there's got to be a seven on both of the other bits of the diagonal because the three numbers repeat each time. So I pencil mark those in. Now this cell can't be a seven. That cell in the top left can't be a seven. Now I'm starting to wonder what has that told me? And I suddenly realize there's a four in the central box that's not on this diagonal. So row two, column two must be a three. Three is must appear on, the, on that diagonal twice more. Now, can this be a five or a nine? No, it can't be a nine from box one. So it's a five. There's definitely a five on this diagonal along with the three. That's formed a pair in the central box there. And one of those numbers has to be on the positive diagonal and it can't be three because of box three. So we get a five on both diagonals and therefore in the center. And I'm pencil marking that, getting a bit confused in box three about what has to be on the diagonal and what, what might be on the diagonal. Um, I think I'm realizing that the population of numbers can't be anything not on the diagonal in those boxes. So it's from two, five, seven, and nine on this diagonal. Uh, now, I mean, there is an open question about whether I would have been quicker on paper. And you can see we're nearly two minutes in and I've got three digits in the grid, maybe four and very little else. But I have suddenly worked out that seven and nine 
Oh, that two can't be on the diagonal for some reason? How have I done that? I don't know, but I did work it out that it had to be five, seven, and nine. And then the other diagonal, which is three and five, the digits in the center are sorted. How did I work out? There was Oh yes, because two couldn't be on either of the positive diagonal cells available in box five, that's why. So now that lets me get some digits in the grid and a bit more pencil marking done, especially in these corner boxes. And they're there to prove very helpful, but I need to concentrate on the negative diagonal again. Try and find out what the three digits on it are, as well as get some other numbers in the grid that keep me going. And oh yeah, column two fully done already. Um, can't quite finish column eight at this point. Now, what are the possibilities? Six, eight, four, nine now can't be, or two. These digits on the negative diagonal must be from one, three, five, and seven. Uh, we obviously know 3 and 5 are on it. The other digits must be from 1 and 7. And if we could just quickly find... Ah, oh, it's in the central box. Maybe I never even spotted that. Oh, I started... In the central box, you can see 7 and 9 are on the positive, therefore not the negative diagonal. And I should have used that. Instead, I did pencil marking until I realised that row 6, column 6 had to be a 1. Now I know it's 3, 5, 1 on that diagonal. And I can try desperately to enter beast mode and hope there's no more clever deductions to be made and that I can just fill in the rest. But unfortunately, I'm still getting pairs. I can work out where five, seven and nine go now in box three. So I really am trying to focus on finishing off boxes one, seven and nine now because they're likely by symmetry as much as anything else to be available. Uh, and indeed boxes 1 and 7 do finish there. Now we're looking into box 9, which has a 6-7 pair, annoyingly. That, that Oh, it does finish. Well, how, how did I know that for sure? Not Oh, because there's a 2-6 pair in the middle row, that's how, which is looking at row 5, column 8. Yes, indeed. So now I'm just trying to find which groups of 3 left to fill in go quickly and gradually picking them up but look at the clock it's already on to four and a half minutes i'm into the last half minute of solving time if i was going to get this done in five minutes and try and score a goal for my team and that's of course if my individual opponent hadn't already already netted which uh, is a fair chance so i'm down to 12 seconds left at this point Will Mark make it? And the answer's pretty clearly no now. There's only five seconds left. Still about 12 digits left to go. About the point in that night Sudoku. And now the clock's gone red. We're into overtime. This wouldn't have counted. I would have been stopped from writing at this point. But I just wanted to see how long it would take. And there we go. So it's five minutes, 10 seconds. Now, I was a bit confused as to why the software hadn't given me a tick at this point, wondering if I'd made an error, so I spent some time checking it. I finally realised Sven's made the software so intelligent, it assumed this was a regular diagonal puzzle and um, thought there was errors along all the diagonals. So I fixed that in the link that you'll be solving on if you have a go at this puzzle. It should, if you get the solution right, it should tell you that it's correct. Um, and in the two other puzzles, well, I'd be very interested to hear in the comments how quick you've managed to solve any of them because um, I think the times they were looking for were were pretty speedy, frankly, and uh, <laughs> delighted to get one point in one of those puzzles. And this was, I think, to some extent, the, the problem with the whole championship was there were no giveaways. There were very hard puzzles throughout. And uh, anyway, it was still great fun. I was delighted to finally win the over 50s championship after in the first four years i was able to do it through turning 50 i came second then i didn't qualify for the championships in germany then there's been a two-year gap so you can tell my age from the fact that i have now won it at the next go uh, and i really look forward to i hope to qualify for next year's world championships i think people are talking about the possibility of them being in canada um, we will see if that transpires, but uh, really interesting. Thank you so much to the organisers, uh, to the World Puzzle Federation, to everybody I met 
in a fabulous two days and uh, hope to see you guys again on the channel soon. Thank you for watching and bye for now. Thank you.